all of my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful soul friends. I am, hey, welcome YouTube. Oh goodness. Okay, so I'm live on YouTube and live on Instagram. Oh, it's so amazing to be here. I'd like everyone just to close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep, deep breath. Filling your lungs up with air and release, sinking down into your body, grounding in. That's right. Another deep breath in. And release, letting go of any fear, worries, doubts, thoughts of lack. And one last deep breath in, filling your lungs up with air, with light, with knowing that you are beautiful, you are enough, and release, feeling peace, feeling calm, knowing that you are enough. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here with me. So I just took a shower and I had a knowing to jump on and share with you a little bit about patience. Now, many, many years ago, before I started talking to I am, I was a waitress. I had a degree in history and I remember I sent out one job application because I had, hi, hi, I had no confidence none at all, zero. And so I didn't believe in myself. I told myself a lie that nobody would ever hire me. And so I went and got a job as a waitress, which is fine. That is a wonderful job to have. So I'm, that's not what I'm saying. But the point is, I was really, really afraid. I did it for years. Okay, well, I will definitely answer questions after I, I tell uh, this story, because I really... I, I went up into Universal Mind and asked what could I share for all the wonderful people that would come live with me today that would be for everyone's highest and greatest good. And I got this story. So that's where we're going to start. Um, but thank you for questions. You guys can definitely ask questions. I'm excited to, to interact with you all. Um, so anyway, um, I was terrified to walk up to tables and I did it for three years. And every night I was terrified. I would like I, I was afraid when people would sit down and I would I would hesitantly go up to them and, and mumble. I just didn't have any confidence at all. Hello, hello. And one night, Phil walked in and he changed my life. And he was already on the, the journey of self-improvement and believing that more was possible for us. And he opened up that world to me. And he said this one sentence to me. He said, Aaron, patience is power. And I wrote it down in my little waitress book. And I, so I had it in my like little waitress apron and I carried it around with me. And every time I would open up my book and take an order, I would see that written in huge letters right across the front, patience is power. And everything in my life started changing from that one sentence. And even today, I still come back to it over and over and over because when we are trying to create change in our lives, create something new, we want it now, right? We are so used to instant gratification that we often think if we're not getting it right away, that we're doing it wrong or that it's not going to come to us. Right. And so, so often myself included, we will end up giving up on something something that was actually going to bring us closer to great expansion. And by giving up on that, we are simply veering back off of our life path and more things that we don't like and don't enjoy experiencing are probably going to happen to get us back onto our life path. So I really want you guys to, especially everybody that's live with me right now, because you are the ones that I connected with before I jumped on here. And this is what we all need today is patience is power. Just because it's not manifesting in our reality instantly doesn't mean that we're on the wrong path. And I also want to 
share with you about the iceberg effect. And if you're not familiar with the iceberg effect, it's the idea that you see an iceberg above the water. And this is how we see most people that are successful or that are closer on their life path to where we wish we would be. We see that little iceberg above the water and we don't see that huge boulder that is underneath the water that is how they built that tiny little iceberg of success. You don't see all the failures. You don't see all the hard work. You don't see all the struggle. You don't see all the failures. But for every single person that has manifested more into their reality, more that uh, more abundance, whatever area of their life that abundance comes, whether it's financial abundance, whether it's abundance of self-love and love with other people in their life, or whether it's an abundance of health, they have had, and I know that we all have had some successes in some areas of our life. And you know, it wasn't the simplest thing in the world that you had to go on a journey to get there. So I want you to know that just because you aren't exactly where you want to be right now, it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It certainly doesn't mean that you're on the wrong path. I think that if you're here in this space with me right now, you are very likely on the right path. And it just is a matter of being patient. And the magical thing about patience is, is when we really sink into it, what we are putting out there, what our energy is saying all of a sudden is that, oh, and this is ties back to that waitress story. So when I started doing that, saying patience is power, patience is power, I started going up to tables, not caring how they reacted to me. I was detaching from the outcome. I was so patient and so be much becoming the observer that people started tipping me more. People started enjoying interacting with me and I started getting lit up and enjoying interacting with them. Because instead of everything being about the end result for me, which as a waitress was receiving a tip at the end of the, the people's, uh, the customer's meal, now it's more about being patient and observing and just being in the moment. And that is really what we are here to do, right? We're here to observe, to be in the moment, to experience. And if we're so focused on what we want to create, we miss all that middle stuff and we push the creation further out. So patience is this beautiful way that you can really sink into the moment. And know it's coming. It is coming. So thank you guys for, for being here to hear that little story. I hope that was helpful to you. Okay, so there are a couple questions over here on YouTube, and I would love to interact with you guys. Oh, well, apparently Kohl's is, uh, tells me that I have 30% off available. Sorry, I guess I didn't turn off my volume. Um, okay, so Rev says, hello, Erin. I just wanted to ask, what do you think about reality shifting? Okay, well, Rev, you've got to tell me what reality shifting is. I don't. I'm not familiar with that term. Um, that doesn't mean I don't know how to do it or what it is. I just don't know what that term is because most of almost everything that I know is coming directly from I am. And because of that, the terms are, don't always line up with what other people out in the spiritual awakening community are using or saying. So if you want to explain a little bit to me, maybe we could we could chat about that. And Ren says, that's a great question. I've been experimenting with reality shifting, quantum jumping too. Patience needs to be practiced like meditation. Okay, quantum jumping. So that's the idea. So if that's what reality shifting is, that's the idea of, um, you know, you're implanting your, your manifestation in a different sort of section of your timeline, right? So you're bringing it forward closer to you. And I think... There's two ways to look at this. The one way to look at this is, of course, anything and everything is possible for you. You are source. You are God. You are here to create. Pick what you want to create and go create it. Now, yes, can you do this? Absolutely. But another way to look at it, a higher way to look at it, I think, is to understand that we came to this individual experience with a mission. Each and every one of us did. And none of our missions are exactly the same. 
they all, um, they, they really are, are their own beautiful individual mission we are here to embody, okay? And if we are picking what we want to create from a place of being an individual human who wants and needs things and is coming from a place of lack and is then going in and trying to shift your reality or quantum jump based on these ideas that are these needs, right? These belief and you have needs because you lack things, then you are not going to be actually moving forward with your real soul mission. So this is so important to understand. When we're picking something to create or something to quantum jump to, it should 100% be coming from your inner guidance, from knowing that you are limitless and you already have everything you need. When you do that, you will get what you are quantum jumping to or reality jumping or reality shifting. Sorry, these terms are not familiar with, too familiar to me, but um, uh, quicker and easier because it's aligned with your soul mission. So if that makes sense, um, I think it's such an important thing to understand just because we can create anything and you can't, you can force create anything that you want because you are God. But if you want to step into that ease, that flow that people talk about that I have finally really stepped into and embodied, and I can tell you it is worth it, it is worth doing the inner work to get there, then you have to be coming from a place of sharing your soul mission. Now, your soul mission is 100% going to terrify you in the beginning, and you're going to want to do somebody else's soul mission, somebody else who has already gone before you and has made it look easy. You're going to want to jump into their soul mission, but that will be a struggle for you. I tried to do that in my past. It was a struggle. It's not fun, and it won't really work. So if you want it to work, it has to be coming from your inner guidance. It has to be your next step. So I hope that was super helpful because I think that was amazing, amazing question. Um, okay. Patience needs to be practiced like meditation. Yes, yes, yes. And for me, whenever I want to start embodying something new, it really is about repeating it over and over and over and over and over and over and over because that's the only way that you can really get past get through that subconscious programming right that subconscious programming these programs are things that we have believed since we were very very little and it's very hard to get through that and so you have to sort of drown that voice out so that's why just seeing that patience is power so much throughout my day really started to change how I experience the world. Um, and Rev says, this is why you should always persist. Yes, 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 yes. As long as you are persisting on what are you, you, what you are being guided to do. So that is super, super, super important. That's the key to everything. Your guidance is step one. Whatever you want to do, whatever change you want to make, Go within and make sure that it's the change that is a lot that is aligned with your soul mission. OK, because if most of us and for me for years, too, I wanted to make change based on what I saw other people being successful with. I said, well, this works for them. Right. So if I go do it, then I'll be happy like they will. And it's, sometimes it's hard to discern, is this coming from, I think it's going to make me happy, or is this coming from this deep soul level? But this is, I mean, it's like happiness 101 right here. Are we picking our path based on knowing we're limitless and that anything is possible and our guidance is coming from within? Because if we are, that's where the magic happens. That's where the flow is. So I hope this was so, so helpful for you guys. Does anybody else want to ask me a question before I pop off? Oh, thank you for heart. Oh, well, thank you, the imaginary bridge. I'm so happy that you popped in at this very moment too. I'm excited to see you. I hope you're well. My heart is so, so, so full of joy to have spent these few minutes with each and every one of you. I love you all because the truth is I know who you are. I have been probably 
in a very similar position to almost all of you. I have felt the doubt. I have felt like, am I crazy? Is this not going to work? Am I doing the wrong thing? Should I quit? Should I give up? No, no. Do not quit. Keep going on this path. Even if everybody else thinks you're crazy, keep going. It is worth it. How do we correctly manifest things? Okay, well, that is a huge, huge question. The first thing is it needs to be coming from your guidance, right? Um, it ha that's, the, that's the number one thing. Step one is learn how to get guidance from within. And I just put up a blog post last night about this is not the same thing as your gut because your gut reaction, what might light you up and make you really, really excited. This is, so now we're talking about guidance, not manifesting, but, but your gut is tied to your old programming. Okay. It is tied to your persona, to your ego, to your physical body, and it wants to keep you safe. So it's going to light up at all the same old things that have always kept you off track, off your soul's path, off your mission. And so it's so, so, so important to start really doing that work of going within and getting real concrete guidance, okay? Because if you're trying to manifest things that are not based on your guidance, that are based on your gut, you're just going to manifest more of what you've been programmed your entire life to manifest, which is probably not abundance. It's probably lack. And so even though you might be jumping in and trying to manifest something that you believe will bring you more, I'm sure you have a trail of failures behind you where you didn't actually end up getting more. And you're saying, why did this work for everybody else, but not for me? So the first step is really learning to go within. This doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to meet all 50 of your spirit guides. There's going within means whatever it means for you and what it means for somebody else does not mean that's how it has to look for you okay we can all access our inner guidance every single one of us if you're human you are connected to source to your inner guidance and based on what you've experienced in your life is and your programming is very much how your guidance is going to <laughs> I love you too. I do, I do, I do. I love you. How So based on how you're programmed is how your inner guidance is going to start coming to you. And that's beautiful. And that's okay. And it's exactly what it should be. But And the more you then start taking a little bit of action forward on that inner guidance. And as I mentioned, that inner guidance is very likely going to terrify you at first. I mean, for those of you who have read One Truth, One Lie, you know that it took me eight years to follow that initial guidance I got when I started going within. I spent about 30 days meditating every day with the intention to connect to something higher. And I finally connected to I am and I am's guidance. And I was trying to manifest money at the time. And I am's guidance was publish my words. It doesn't matter if it's an ebook or a blog, just put my words out there. And I said, oh, no way. Everybody's going to think I'm crazy. I can't say I'm talking to God in my head. No way. And it took me eight years to follow that guidance. And that's okay. That was part of my path. And if it's taking you longer than you want it to, that's okay, too. That's where this patience is power really comes in. And if you're not ready, that's okay. It means you might have another lesson or two to learn before you you build up the knowing or the courage to go and follow that soul guidance that you are getting. That's okay. All right. This is not a marathon and you don't have to be where you want to be at the end, this very moment to be worthy. Now, as soon as you can understand and embody your worthiness, your being enough, you're exactly everything that you, at that point, then you win, then, then you're everything. <laughs> that's, the, that's the winning, but it's a journey to get there. And we've all been through so much in our past. And I know everybody that's on here with me right now on YouTube and Instagram, I know that we have felt like misfits and felt like the odd man out or the odd duck out our entire lives. 
okay? So I know that we have been through things that other people haven't been through, but everybody goes through stuff, okay? Because everybody's always being pushed closer to their truth. It's just that we're the ones that had the eyes to see it, that opened up enough to see it. And so please know that you are in the right place when you want more, when you want to open to this and you're looking for abundance and you're saying, oh, should I be? Is it right to, to want more money? That's a big thing. Money blocks are, whew, that's, that is a big thing. I was just writing an email to somebody that's in uh, my course, Unlimited You, who, um, who's on the call right now about money blocks. Now, that is a huge thing. Now, that took me a long time to, to get through, to to understand and step into the knowing that it was safe for me to charge money for my services. It was safe for me to say, I have worth. Now I know that money is just an energy exchange. And I've actually given services away for free in the past. And the people that I gave the services away for, uh, way to for free, they didn't end up doing the work or they didn't end up getting the benefit. It's really amazing. And even now I recently gave away an energy session to someone and it's so interesting because when I, I charge um, for a private energy session, $222 and the, the results are amazing. The feedback I get is absolutely magical, right? They change people's lives. And so when you look at it from that way, $222 is actually a very good deal. But anyway, I gave an energy session away to somebody who I said to myself, well, this person really needs this. And I know that he won't ask for it. So I will, I will just gift it to him. And he didn't feel anything. And it's because he wasn't ready. He didn't see the worth himself, right? He didn't see that there was a reason for him to make this happen. And so everything happens when we're ready for it to happen, when we're ready for it to, to call it in. And so I think that's, anyway, money blocks are huge. And I want you to know that even if you're on a spiritual path, it doesn't mean that spirituality is tied to giving things away for free. That's, that's not true. And so many people and myself too, for a long time, get held back from abundance, from their true worth, because they feel dirty um, charging for their services. And so let me tell you what I found out about my own money block. And maybe this will help you sort of open up and see, oh my gosh, is this what's been going on with me my whole life? So for me, Growing up, my parents did not have a lot of money. And I mean, we weren't, we always had food, right? There were toys every Christmas and birthday, but they were always worried, right? There was always tons of anxiety about money. They were always talking about bills and there wasn't enough money to pay bills. So money was a huge source of anxiety in my household. And as I grew up and as I became a, a preteen and a teenager, I started to understand that if I asked them for something, it caused them huge anxiety, right? If I needed new clothes because I was growing, that would cause them anxiety, okay? If I, if I needed a calculator for school and I, I didn't want to cause them anxiety around money, so I stopped asking them for things because I felt such guilt. Or if I asked them, I felt such horrible guilt. And I mean, I would, I would agonize over it, right? Because I'm a very inner person where I just keep turning things over and over in my head. And so I started programming myself from a very young age and then all through my childhood that when I asked people for things that I needed, especially money, that that caused people anxiety. Okay. And so instead of me understanding that money is an energy exchange and that when I am offering something of value to someone in order for someone to receive that full value, they have to give something that's valuable to them, like money back to me or vice versa. You know, I am happy now to give my money to someone who is going to give value back to me. But this money block is something I only really dug into at the beginning of last year. And it was interesting. Once I did the inner work around that, which then I built my 
course, Unlimited You around, when I did that in our work, my book started selling because the first two months I published uh, One Truth, One Law, it was, it was like crickets, right? And now I have, I have over a thousand reviews on Amazon, I don't know, 500 reviews on Audible and uh, Goodreads, and I'm selling a lot of books and I'm more abundant financially than I've ever been. And so it wasn't just publishing the book. It wasn't just my soul mission. It was also stepping forward and saying, this old programming that I am not worth charging money, that's not me anymore. I have worth inherently in who I am. And because I was able to step forward and say that, I was able to really embody my soul mission. Because when you're doing a soul mission, you're going to need money to move forward with it. How can you spread it out to thousands and then millions of people and fully embody your soul mission because you are God, you are here to spread your message. How can you do that? If you aren't collecting money for your services, you need that money. My, the money I make, most of it goes right back out into spreading my book, into spreading my energy work. I am spending money on pushing my work out and expanding it as quickly as it comes in. And this is how my soul mission is building. So I want you to know as a as someone who's who is a spirit, some on some spectrum of the spiritual awakening journey. It is safe and it is necessary for you to embody and step into being financially abundant. Okay. So oh, this is awesome. Please save this if you are able to. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to save it. I, I learned how to do that the other day. <laughs> so awesome. Okay. And Ren says, um, uh, that's what I want. I realized it's the feeling of safety and security. Yes. I have to tell you, when you're expanding into becoming abundant in whatever area, it's not going to feel safe and secure, right? Because you're taking, it takes massive, massive trust in the universe. Mass, oh, there we are. It's not Kohl's now. Now it's get a home warranty. Sorry, next time I'll make sure I mute first. Um, but it takes massive, massive, massive trust in the universe that your guidance is real, that what we can't see the spiritual world is really where everything is formed, where everything we experience in the physical is actually coming from. When you can get to that place of massive trust and you do it just by slowly taking a small step forward based on your guidance, seeing that it doesn't blow up in your face, and then taking another tiny step forward based on your guidance, and once again, seeing it doesn't blow up in your face, that's how you build knowing. It's a process of building. You're not supposed to be there instantly, right when you read your first spiritual book or watch your first spiritual spiritual documentary, okay? It's not supposed to be instant. It's a journey. It's a life path. And so I'm just, gosh, this was so much fun. I'll be definitely be back in a few days to do this again. So if you have questions for me, definitely think about them. And I will save these so people can watch them. I love you all. Love you. Love you. I love you. I know who you are. I know how powerful you are. And it's time to step into that. It is time to step into that, guys. It is time. It is time. The awakening is happening. The expansion is happening. And you are at the forefront of it. I know it feels like, I know it feels like everybody else is already out there. I'm out there, right? Lots of other people that you follow on social media, they're already out there. Guys, it's less than 1% of the population, okay? Now, luckily, this group is holding a tremendous amount of light for the other 99% of the population. But you aren't too late to the party. That's another lie your programming will tell you. You are not too late to the party, okay? You are early. You are at the forefront of this massive movement toward light and ascension. So it's time to step into embodying your, your soul mission. It really is. Okay, Robert, thank you. Hi, CB. I'm glad you read my book. Thank you for being here with me. Um, my cosmic concert. You have such a gentle, sweet energy and voice. I appreciate that. That's really, thank you. Um, what are the daily practices you recommend? Lath, okay. Number one, 
every single day. And this is where it starts. After you do this, you can move into, into the next step. But the first step is to receive the inner guidance, which means spending 15, 20 minutes a day going within with the specific intention. It's sort of like meditation, but the specific intention to receive guidance. Because if you're having the specific intention just to meditate, then that's what you're going to get. But if your specific intention is to receive guidance, your highest guidance for your greatest good, you will start getting it. So um, if you haven't read my book, there, there's a beautiful start to that within my book. Um, I have a course, Unlimited You, that really goes into great depth in, into all of this, into removing your programming, into um, tapping into your inner voice, receiving your guidance, and then the steps to manifesting. Um, and you can always um, send me an email or send me a DM on Instagram if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for compliments about my book. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is my life's work. And I am so excited that, um, it is lighting people up and bringing them closer to their truth. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Our inner guidance is so simple. And just because it's coming through to somebody else and, and you're seeing them on Instagram or YouTube, that it's coming through a certain way. It doesn't mean they're doing it right. And you're doing it wrong. However, it comes to you. It's yours. And it's a gift and we all have access to it. So it's really about stepping into that, that knowing that you have worth. You have worth and you don't have to do it somebody else's way. Your way is beautiful. All right. I love you all. Have a beautiful rest of your day, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Uh, okay. I don't know how to. Well, let's see. We can end YouTube. Okay, yes, and okay.